I feel like I need to preface this video by saying this is not normal behavior. I have too many fixed blade knives. There are more knives here than I know what to do with. Uh, I don't buy these because I intend on using them all as a one knife for life situation. I buy them because I have an admiration for them as, as, as tools and as objects. I use all of them in the sense that I like to know how each of them performs. But um, really, of course, no one needs this many fixed blade knives. Of course they don't. But if you enjoy having this many fixed blade knives, then maybe you do need them. And I think that's where I am right now. Anyway, without much further ado, I'm going to lay them out on the table in subcategories, and I'll show you my current fixed blade knife collection. And I think it's pretty good right now. First up here is, uh, this is not my knife, this is my buddy Chris's knife. This is an Australian Army Golok. So I'm yet to review this. I have been meaning to, but I keep getting new stuff. And um, I'm sort of waiting for the right opportunity to do the right review on it. But it's a very, very nice, big, thick piece of spring steel. Very choppish. Comes with a pretty, pretty raggedy, very much Army surplus style sheath. But um, the tool itself though, is actually quite nice. Uh, it was uh, an actual army item here, so I'm not sure about the company or much about it at all, apart from it's big and heavy, and it looks like it would chop up a storm. It's the Australian Army Golok, and that is my largest fixed blade knife uh, in my collection right now. Heavy duty survival knives, I've got the K-Bar Becker BK7, I use this on my dickhead survival overnighter, and it's pretty good, pretty good for a large survival knife. I think in Australia, or at least in my part of Australia, a knife this large isn't needed for survival. I think you could cut down to probably smaller than this. You could probably go your four to five inches and do all your jobs because really our wood is so hard that even with a huge, even with a knife that was this long, when it's still just a knife and not, you know, a proper heavy chopper implement, um, it's probably not going to do your wood chopping as easy as just a saw is going to do it for you or an axe. But this is a um, BK7 in 1095 Crovan steel. Going to do some mods to this one. I think I am going to go and get the uh, micarta handles. Probably going to take off this paint as well because it looks rubbish. Uh, and the uh, A1, this could be my favorite fixed blade knife. Uh, it's just a real joy to use. It is a little bit lighter. It does feel a little bit more... Um, more carryable than this one. This one just feels really uncarryable because it has a big floppy sheath as well. Maybe it needs some kydex. Uh, this one is probably selling for about 350 bucks now. There's some on sale still for about 305 um, before the prices go up. If you are looking at one of these, now is probably the time to strike. You can find these uh, from some eBay sellers for just low 300s. Still a lot of money for VG10, although it is really well made, thick, VG10 with a great handle and a great grind and this is definitely uh, one that I really enjoy using. I look for an excuse to use this and really this too. They're, they're good for big fun knives and fun definitely a palatable characteristic when hunting for big knives in my opinion. Uh, medium sized camp style knives. Um, these are all you know pretty good within their own you know own little circles. So you've got the Falcon even S1 which is a great sort of multitask, multi-purpose uh, general use knife. Um, full, fully convex ground all the way to the edge. Um, very, very nice knife. Um, I'd say you could do pretty pretty heavy duty stuff, not absolute destruction like uh, has been seen on Survival Lily's video, but I think with your general, um, you know, rugged work, no problems at all. Big, thick, strong, sort of tough knife. No worries, I do like the A1's handle a little bit better. This is a little bit on the thinner side of the handle, but um, it's a good blade shape, good for sort of even segueing into your, your maybe um, self-defense or whatever thrusty type jobs as well. Talking way out of my pay grade there. This is the Schrader SGHF42D. Um, this is okay, it's a bit junky. I, I would sell it, but I've kind of ruined it too much to need to ever expect a half decent price and I'll probably just give it away to someone uh, eventually. It's 1095 steel, fully flat ground. Um, the handle came loose when I battened with it so that kind of put me off a little bit, just endless, endlessly rickety now. Um, but yeah, it, it's okay. It's like a $70, $80 knife. It comes with a pretty decent leather sheath. It's okay. It's, uh, it's fine. Uh, the Master Hunter is really, really good um, for a... These knives here, these are your mid-sized sort of random task knives. I, I wouldn't particularly be using them for um, much apart from, say, kindling prep, food prep, 
uh, you're cutting your rope, just having a knife on your belt. Um, wouldn't be using them for too much wood processing apart from busting down um, sort of wood that's, I guess, less than that thick into, into kindling. So, And this is a Lion Steel T5, probably one of my favorites. I really love the handle, it's really comfortable. Love the looks of it, I like the tall grind. I find it slices food and I've, I've got a, um, got my wood shaving down pretty well with it as well. By now it's nice and thick, it'll um, plow through your, your uh, kindling. Well that's the thing, no worries at all. Um, it doesn't strike a ferry rod particularly well as my mate, my buddy uh, Killer Deegan uh, discovered. It's um, The spine does feel sharp, but it's obviously not sharp enough to actually take um, take the ferry rod out. And the ferry rod's actually put a few little like wobbles in here rather than um, so it's just obviously not quite right. The, either the angle was too sharp or it was just wrong, or it's just the wrong steel for it as well. Who knows? So not the best ferry rod scraper. This one though, uh, you watch Killer Deegan's video on it and it absolutely destroys a ferry rod. So kind of cool, I guess, kind of cool. 3V this steel is. Uh, Nylox here, 1095 and VG10. All right, in this frame of my like Scandinavian type um, woodworking or utility knives, they've all got the, um, Similar design philosophy of being really low price, but having you know, pretty high uh, durability and high value to them. So the Mora Companion, uh, more or less the quintessential first bushcrafting knife, for a good reason, super comfortable handle, um, decent quality, stainless um, or carbon steel available. This is the Holter Force GK, this is an SK5 steel. Uh, this has got a, um, a Scandi, Burr, <laughs> so scanty grime with then a secondary V bevel on the end. Um, very, very tough knife. You can see in my video review of that. Um, absolutely pounded that knife and it is completely fine, completely strong. And then this uh, Mora Bushcraft Black, probably one of my most highly used knives. I've put a um, pretty shiny mirror or mirror ish, it was a mirror, um, full scanty on that. This comes with like a um, a micro bevel on it as well, but I said no, I want it to be full on Scandi, so I made it a full on Scandi and it shaves wood spectacularly. So, um, really comfortable handles on all three of these. This one's probably got a bit of a harder handle, but this is only about $16 in Australia, about probably $8 to $10 in America, so very, very, very good value on all three of these, really. Yeah, this was my first uh, fixed blade knife purchase that I bought before I was really into knives. Uh, I just for some reason, I, I, it spoke to me and I, and I wanted it because I was watching lots of Man vs. Wild. I was um, just kind of just moved into the country and was fancying myself a bit more of an outdoorsman. So, not, this is what people who don't know knives go and get. They go and say, well, who's an outdoorsman? Bear Grylls. What knife is his knife? This knife is his knife. And you know what? Oh, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. Hey, it's still here, isn't it? It's still, it isn't broken half in half. I've actually used it. I've dulled the steel and the serrations pretty much all the way down. The serrations are just like bumps now. Um, yeah, it's, you yeah, know, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's low priced. It's probably, you know, low quality materials, but it seems to be put together relatively well. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's got a story to it now, I guess, doesn't it? So it's the uh, Bear, Bear Grylls uh, Ultimate Survival Knife. Uh, these are three, I uh, guess, more tactical focused knives. So below, at the bottom here, is an obviously um, aggressive knife. This is the Cold Steel Cobon Tanto, uh, an AUS-8. Uh, sort of a sharp, very stabby knife. It, it's, I like it. it. It's got a really thin handle. It's, you know, it's not particularly for much more than stabbing into stuff. But you know what? It's still not a weak knife. It's still, I think the tang is pretty much going straight all the way down to this rivet here or this um, eyelet here. It's it's nothing to snort at, it's just probably not for everyone. And I'm, I'm keeping it on deck really because it's so cheap, it's not really worth reselling. It's just, I got it and it'll just be a test blade and a, you know, it's a good AUS-8 sample. It's a big piece of it if, you want, if, if I wanted to see how, for example, AUS-8 cuts or rusts or whatever. Uh, the Gerber Strongarm, uh, this is a great knife and I recommend it to most people who, now if you want your first knife, rather than getting the bare grills, I'd say start with the, the strong arm. It's got plain edge, it's, you know, it's got a nice, um, easy to sharpen steel that's completely fine for, for outdoor work, a 420HC. Uh, it's got a comfortable grip, it's got a good sheath. It, it's, it's worth a lot more than you pay for it, in my opinion, the Gerber strong arm. And then this is the uh, Zero Tolerance 0180. I think currently, apart from the A1, could be my most expensive fixed blade knife. Uh, this is um, Vanitas 4 Extra Steel. Uh, it came with a really sort of um, 
uh, broad factory grinds, but I've gone and put a higher um, geometry on it with my Tormac, and geez, it cuts well now, it just crazy slices. Um, it's still quite thick, still quite stout, but it's um, it definitely feels a bit more versatile since I've done that. Very kind of similar to the strong arm, I think. Uh, obviously some differences in terms of it's, you know, it's a slab handle rather than an encapsulated handle and the steel is obviously different, but same kind of purpose, I think. Um, and I think I mentioned in my review, if you, money was no object, then yeah, this is the nice one to have. Or if you're just a collector like me and money is still an object, but you're happy to spend it on knives. But um, if you just want something that's high utility, then I think the strong arm would probably do just as good a job for you. Just got to sharpen it a little bit more, that's all. And lastly, three great companion knives, really. Between these three knives, you've got a lot of goodness. Uh, so you've got a Falcon even F1. This is, could just, could almost be, I don't know if it's my favorite, but geez, it's close to being one of my favorite knives. I just love, it's like the fixed blade equivalent of my Almar Falcon. Like it's just nice and subdued looking, super capable. You know, the materials aren't the best and you probably pay a bit more than you'd like to, but there's just something about it. You just, it's just really enjoyable to use and um, you do a lot of work with it. It's just strong and capable and I got a lot of good things to say about the Falcon Even F1. It's definitely stick it, sticking around. Now this knife is a Tyndall Knives, um, it's more of a hunting design, what would they call it? The Sawtooth Hunter. So it's a finger, forward finger trial for sort of control when skinning. It's made of O1 tool steel, um, sort of does tarnish, just a little tiny bit, not as much as you would, you'd imagine. Um, this one has just been sitting in my shed probably after last time I took it out. I don't think I might have coated it, so it's got a little bit of speckling on the blade. Nothing that's going to cause any damage, just, just brush it off or sand it off with really fine sandpaper. No worries at all. Uh, Forrest does a fantastic job uh, and his knives are only getting better. I just really strongly suggest you check out his website. Um, if you're after a custom knife or a semi-custom knife, because um, I think he does just do the stock removal, then it, I think it's a great place to go because he's kind of got that cottage industry thing going on where he really, really cares and he's um, he's still kind of trying to, you know, he's, I hear he's just had a good, um, got a good sort of batch deal with um, Best Made Company to like make a knife for them. So that's really good news for him because he's he did it for a while and then he stopped and he's come back really swinging and um, it's just an excellent knife here. I got this one in a raffle. Um, he makes much bigger knives. He makes much uh, some smaller knives. Uh, he makes various purpose knives uh, and more or less if you if you have a conversation with him he'll he'll tell you exactly what he can make for you. It'll probably be out of 01 steel but if that's okay with you then Geez, um, I think there's really something for you in Forest's line. And then um, this is the Bark River JX6 Companion. Been using this all day today. It's been been uh, reviewed currently. And uh, this is just really nice. It's kind of like a uh, Canadian belt knife style. Obviously with a different hump here. That's not a Canadian belt knife usually is oval shaped sort of thing. But just in terms of the handle and where your hand sits on it and what it can do for you in terms of just being a great food prep tool and also really a great utility blade as well. Uh, really, really good. It comes with this really cool little, um, little sheath here. Uh, just sits vertically on your belt. No worries at all. Got a magnet in there so you can hold it upside down without it falling out. Um, all three of these knives are excellent and um, I really would struggle to pick between my favorite here. Um, it's, uh, it's probably still this one though.